In this video, I'm going to teach you Sun style Tai Chi single whip. The Tai Chi form single whip occurs across all styles of Tai Chi Chuan, such as Yang, Chen, and Sun style. However, in the Sun style Tai Chi, the single whip always precedes the Tai Chi form waving hands and clouds. It acts as an entry or a segue into waving hands and clouds. Now, the Sun style Tai Chi single whip on appearance looks quite simple, however, uh, it has layers of depth to it, as all Tai Chi. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to do the single whip, then I will teach you common mistakes and errors and how to fix those. If you like my videos, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave comments. Your engagement really helps my channel. All right, let's get started, shall we? Okay, the Sun style single whip. First, I just want you to watch me and not move with me. All right. Now, let's go ahead and work through it together um, from the outer layer into more of the inner workings of this movement. So we're going to be in a higher stance because we're in Sun style and then just hold a ball. Your ball is about six to eight inches in diameter, and so that means that your hands are uh, in front of your shoulder claw, so no wider than your shoulders. And now you're gonna weight shift to your left and rotate your body to the right. Then take a little lateral step, and then just carry the ball and weight shift to your right. Now turn the whole body to the left and expand open your arms. <clears throat> Just like that. Very good. Okay, let's do this two more times and then we'll start going into common errors and how to fix those. So once again, a little bit of a taller stance, holding your ball. Weight shift to your left and rotate to your right. Just to the right corner. Then take a little lateral step and just carry the ball, carry it with you. Then we'll rotate the whole body and open your ball. Okay, that is our Sun style single whip. Now, let's look at some of the mechanics of this to make it proper so that you get maximum benefit. Now, as we hold our ball, weight shift to the left and rotate. This step is a, I say a lateral step, so it's off to the side, but it's also slightly ahead. So if you, uh, let's put our ball down. If you take your, the ball of your left foot and put it in the arch of your right foot, I'm gonna turn sideways, then that's like a half a step forward, right? And then just move that right foot parallel on that same line, and that's what your lateral step would look like. So it's lateral, but half a foot width forward, okay? You can kind of see that here. So it's not exactly parallel, it's parallel and slightly forward. Now we don't move in this linear plane, we're gonna rotate our body to facilitate that step, okay? So let's try that part together. So hold your ball, weight shift to your left, and then you're now facing uh, your right corner. And that's about 30 to 45 degrees. So if you over rotate, it's gonna be really uncomfortable. And then that rotation takes your foot out for you. Now, all you do here is the upper body, imagine it just resting on a surface like maybe an ice surface or water and you're just floating on top of that surface. So you keep your pelvic trim and you just move everything towards your right. And it's about 70-30. If you go here you're going to be way uncomfortable. So right there. Now all I want you to do is imagine that you have a hinge or a pivot point in the center of your body and just, we're not gonna do the arms, just rotate your whole body like this, from your right corner to the left corner, okay? Just get used to that feeling. 
Now your nose is staying in between the hands and aligned with your dantian or with that area below your belly button. So you're just rotating the whole body. And I know you can't see it with my pants, but my knees are staying bent throughout. So just get that feeling of that whole body movement. I call this the sprinkler effect, you know, like a sprinkler head, and we're just sprinkling the yard and back. Okay? So you've got that feeling. Now we're just going to add that this balloon here gets bigger as we rotate the whole thing. There we go. And that is your proper single whip. So let's try that a few times. So turn the whole body. That's my sprinkler sound. And back. That's right. And open. And back. Very nice. Okay, great. Now let's put this together. So we're holding our ball. Remember, it's not a big ball because we want, we want space to work with. So <clears throat> six to eight inches, weight shift to the left and rotate right, and then just lateral step and carry the ball. Your upper body is just riding on top of the lower body, nice and even. Now do your sprinkler and rotate the whole body and the arms, they expand. Both knees bent. Okay, I can't, I can't overemphasize that. Most times you'll see people do this and with that knee straight. So you're still sitting down on your stool. Okay, very nice. Now another hugely common uh, problem with this is the scapula tend to retract. So your scapula are, let me get my Tai Chi Tom here, the scapula are this triangular bone on the back, we often are uh, referred to as the shoulder blade, and here's the spine. So Tai Chi Tom here has nice placement of the scapula. They're away from the spine, and so that kind of gives a nice broad and flat back. And these stay pretty much in place during, during Tai Chi and during our single whip. What we don't want happening is that the scapula, what we call retract, or move towards the spine. So in that instance, it looks like, let's see if you can see my back, it would look like, uh, like this. Okay, so can you see that my scapula on both sides are moving towards my spine? And we don't want to do that because then we're easily pushed back and it raises our, our uh, breath. So when we do our movement and our rotation and we're expanding that ball, our scapula stay put. Now we're not protracting, so protracting would be like, I mean overly protracting would be like that. We don't want to do that, so we're not hunching like so. We're just setting them, broadening our back, and then turning and opening. Let the rotation take care of it for you. So the most common error is that this arm here shrinks. Hope you can see this, yeah. And people will do this. So this arm, they'll do great. And their focus is here, and they're blocking and moving it away. But as they do, they're pulling this one back, unbeknownst to them. Or oftentimes you'll see this, okay? And so from this standpoint, it kind of looks like, you know, you've got your hands up. I didn't do it, I didn't do it, okay? We want this posture. So we want our scapula against the back and broad but not moving towards the spine on both arms. <clears throat> so in order to make that happen, what you have to do is imagine that your arms are, are growing longer towards the corners. So let's start here, okay? <laughs> and you're going to rotate as the sprinkler, but this arm, rather than pulling back, is going to lengthen towards that right corner. So it lengthens towards the right corner. So you can imagine that you're kind of pushing into a big marshmallow. And this one is lengthening a little past your left corner, and it's also pushing into a marshmallow. Okay, so you can see that it's a, an expression of expansion and not retraction. Okay, let's try that again. 
Oh, remember, this arm is not going to shrink. It's going to gently push into that marshmallow across like so. Yeah. Okay, so that should have a, a whole body feeling and a nice rounded and soft receiving feeling on the inside and a nice solid feeling on the outside on, uh, through your back and the back of your legs all the way down to your feet. Okay, one more time. So open and remember this arm, you can, if you need to, you can think of it as sort of gently pushing something away. Very nice. Now, the error that I see is that the wrists are bent up. So people will do it like this. Okay, can you see how my wrist is up? Well, not only is that uncomfortable, but if somebody were just to push here, then it, you know, they can do all sorts of not so nice things to me. So we want to have our wrist in a more neutral position. And you can think of the energy as coming out of the Lao Gong or the, this point in your hand right here. Okay. So <clears throat> as we turn, so go ahead and get in, in position with me. So as we turn, imagine that your arms are lengthening to the corners and the you're sending your intention through the arms from the spine out that, that point on your hand rather than here. So like so. And then this, this position is very hard for anybody to even find a surface area to push on. This position is like, yeah, push right here. Okay, so we, won't, we don't wanna do that. Okay, so we have, let's see. We're gonna move the whole body Right, so the sprinkler. And then when we expand, we're gonna lengthen our arms to the corners. We're gonna keep our nose over the dantian. And we're going to keep our wrist in a neutral position and our knees bent. And final, final one that is a common error is that people tend to look at their hand. So let's just get in this posture and look at your hand. Yeah. Now, just feel that and feel if that's creating any tension in your body or if you're where your breath is. And I feel a lot more strain through this leg, actually. Now, let's come back and open up. Keep your nose over your dantian and your intent is out there. It is not here. Okay? So just use your peripheral vision. And as you open up, open up your peripheral vision. Keep your nose over your dantian. And now, it, you know, the tendency, your habit is probably to look at it. Try not to look at it and use your peripheral vision to take in the whole room and now feel your body. Now you should feel a lot more whole body sensation and less strain through your body. So keep your nose over your dantian as we do our single whip. Finally, Last one is make sure that your elbows are heavy because when we expand, oftentimes people will want to lift their elbows up. Our elbows, remember, are full of the weight, like if the water was at the bottom of our arm, and that helps us to be rooted. We're not collapsed in, that's different. So the tube is still open and flowing, but the bottom of the tube is nice and heavy, so our elbows are anchored uh, to the ground, sort of like kickstands. Now you might try this a couple times in front of the mirror and make sure that you're not like that. Okay, that does not give any uh, uh, signal of confidence um, and that you are expanding and out. And wrists are neutral, knees are bent, nose aligned over your dantian. And now we're perfectly designed or perfectly set up to scoop that right, that, I'm sorry, that left foot in and do our waving hands and clouds. And that's a whole nother chapter. I do the single whip entry into waving hands and clouds uh, differently than most people. I feel like the single whip should be in the opposite direction to set me up to go the direction of my waving hands and clouds. But that's a whole nother video. So let's practice this a few times. I'm going to do a front view and then I'll do a back view and we'll do it to both sides. And I'll just offer a few verbal cues to remind you of these points for your soon style single whip. 
So higher stance and weight shift and turn. So weight shift to the left leg, turning to your right corner and a little lateral step. Carry the ball so your body is just riding on the legs. Then as we turn, keep your nose over the dantian and your arms are expanding and pushing into that big marshmallow. Wrist are neutral, not bent up. And your eyes are our peripheral view, nose over the dantian. I, I bet you some of you are looking at your hand. Very nice, right there. Good. And then we would come in. All right, let's try the other side. We've had plenty of practice on this side. So let's weight shift to your right, turn to the left, and then a little lateral step, and then just your upper body riding on the lower body as you carry the whole thing. Then turn the body and expand your balloon. Keep your nose over your dantian, both knees bent, and wrist neutral. Good. Let's do it a couple times to that side. All right. Here we are, weight shift right, turn to the left corner, little lateral step, carry the ball. Keep this knee bent, try not to straighten out that knee. And then as we open, this balloon expands and your hands push into the big marshmallow way in front of you to each corner. Good, wrists are neutral, nose over dantian. Use that peripheral vision. Nice. Okay, let's do one to each side from the reverse view. And here we are. And weight shifts right, turn to your left. Little lateral step, glide over, open up. And remember, your shoulders are not retracting. Okay, not looking at your hand. Very nice. And back to the center. Let's do the other side. Weight shift left, rotate right, little lateral step. Then glide. Now be the sprinkler and turn the whole body. Open up, expanding that balloon. Arms are moving into the big marshmallow to the corners. And you're opening up a peripheral view. Very nice. So now Monty wants to be entertained. So I hope that you found that very helpful, um, you know, such a same, seemingly simple form. And many of those things that I taught you in this video are applicable to the other forms, any of the other forms as well, really no matter what the style. Like for instance, not bending your wrist up, um, uh, using peripheral vision, letting this upper body ride on the lower body, keeping your pelvic trim. I could just go on and on. So thank you for joining me. Please leave comments. Um, I love it when you become engaged and you uh, give me comments or email me or whatever. It just makes it more um, alive for me. So I would appreciate if you would do that or even just simply hitting that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm so that more people find me. So thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.